Hello friends, today we are going to discuss what steps can help you to improve your child's focus or attention span. When does your child lose focus? If they are not interested in an activity, so it could be a school-based activity like homework or they have to do some worksheets. It is a task that requires sitting for a long duration or they observe that while they are doing the activity, you are busy in your own work or you gave them the activity and went away. So they get a chance to escape, reflecting how uninterested they are. Step 1. Presenting an activity of the child's interest to start with. You try to work on the sitting tolerance of your child. It is because the child does not feel engaged in the activity. If they are, you could find them focusing on an activity for hours on. One hour of drawing, one hour of coloring, one hour of playing with the blocks, one hour of playing with the cars. Do they really don't have focus? Yes, they do. You just need to work on the engagement of the child in the activity. They don't want to do their homework, but they are interested in coloring. So what to do? Why don't we try letting them draw something or color some picture and then write, try to write alphabets below it, which are essentially the name of that picture. Maybe they drew an elephant, an umbrella. So we try to write that name with colors themselves. Let them write with different colors. Step two. Try sitting with the child for the activity, especially the ones that they do not show interest in. Don't just tell them you have to do them and try to avoid repetitive steps. If you keep telling them, do this, okay, do it again, okay, do it again, they will not be interested in that. Instead, if you try to make it fun, for example, they are supposed to put balls in a container. So instead, you ask them to drop them from the top. So if your child has a visual seeking behavior, they like looking at falling objects. They would really like to watch the falls fall down. Step three, you do sit with the child, but try to sit quietly after giving the initial instruction. And as soon as you saw that the child has initiated the activity that you were looking for, fine, let them complete it and only interfere or interrupt when you see that the child has stopped the activity and is sitting idle for 30 seconds or is completely distracted at the moment. So you can tell them, have you finished already? Rather than saying, please look over here, focus, concentrate. Now, you need to introduce the elements of distraction for your child. If you are not sitting with the child continuously for the activity, that is also an element of distraction. How? The child is doing their work and simultaneously you try to do your own work and you are sure that the child knows how to finish it. Then you try to get up once or twice and move within the room just to see your movement does not distract the child. Or even if the child looks up once to see what you are doing, they engage back in their activity. Then you can try to leave the room once or twice and then return so that the child is assured that you know you are watching at what they are doing. Next step would be you leave and then return after approximately the time that you know the child usually takes to complete the activity. So it could be five minutes or 10 minutes or so on. And finally, you can tell the child when you finish the activity, you can show me or you can call me. Mama, my activity is complete or daddy, my activity is complete. One of the most distracting elements in an activity could be listening to the parent talking continuously. The, num the amount of instructions that we give to the child should be kept to a minimum. If the parent is continuously talking and the child has to also focus on the work, they might find it too distracting and start looking at something else, some other element in the environment, a sensory element that they feel comfortable with. So they may run away. They might start to look at the walls or some patterns on the curtains or within the room, some posters trying to focus on some other sound in the environment. In order to reduce these distractions, 
let us try to only let them focus on the activity, the visual aspect of it, rather than the talking. What other elements can distract the child in an activity? Two parents talking at the same time, or even if one parent is engaged with the child, there are other members of the family who are talking around or they are moving around. It does not help in the initial stage. So you can try to limit the activity to an environment where there will be less movement involved, less distractions from people, talking, conversations, and the child can better maintain their focus. Secondly, if the environment has too much clutter, the toys are around or some sensory elements that the child always needs are around, then they would prefer to go there rather than stay focused with the activity. Thirdly, if you introduce too many activities, there are too many activities kept on the table. Maybe you have planned three activities to do and all of them are presented at the same time or at least are in the visual field of the child. They would get distracted and they would want to do everything at the same time or maybe try to find something that they like more. Instead, one activity at a time, the others you can try to keep it below the table or in the cupboard which is close to you and then get it later. If you think that your child's attention is this much or this is the number of activities that they can do in one go, maybe one of their interest and one that you have asked them to do, give them a sensory break depending on their own sensory need, movement, touch, pressure, smell, taste, anything would work. And the last aspect of this attention is, my child got so focused on that activity that they do not want to leave it anymore. They want to continue with this activity and we cannot introduce another one in between. Why? Because you try to take the activity away or told the child, okay, fine, this activity is over now. Instead, if we try to engage the child in assembling the activity, putting all the elements together, keeping it away on their own, they get a closure. Just before we finish this video, three very important steps that I'd like to emphasize. Try to keep the repetitive steps in an activity to a minimum. Try to keep the instructions that you are giving the child to a minimum and thirdly, emphasize a distraction-free environment at least in the initial stages before you're introducing elements of having movement or social setting around them. Let me know if these steps in this video was informative for you. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos related to child development and autism awareness. Please ring the bell icon for notifications whenever my videos are out. We'll meet again soon. Bye!